All right, so for this particular demonstration, I'm going to be using something called Zelda Demo. It's out in the README. I've already got the various sprites I'm going to need. I've got standing and walking in each of the directions. I've got a door. I've got a ghost that follows me. I also put some invisible objects in just so that you can tell which room you're in. So the first room just shows uh, room one text. The next room shows room two text. The menu says this is the menu. And it's got a special thing to go back. So right now, in this particular example, if I, I can move around in each of the directions, it changes my sprite. When I run into the door, it takes me to the next room. Now, notice that when I go to the next room, I don't exist. I could create another version of myself, but that's actually creating another object. In this particular game, what I'd like to do is just take the same object and move it between rooms so that I don't have to reset all the variables every time I go into a new room. So what I'm going to do is, in link, there's a little checkbox right underneath step called persistent. So what I want to do is I want to turn that on. What that does is objects actually move from room to room. So now I'm in this room. If I go back, I'm in the previous room. There's a little bit of trickiness in that I have to jump when I hit doors. So when Link collides with a door, he actually has to jump to where he's going to be in the next room and then go to that room because you keep your X and Y position otherwise. So if I was in the lower right of the room and I didn't do this jump, I would just be there. So to show you what that looks like, if I go over here, I collide with the door, I would stay there. So you have to actually say, put in where you want the player to jump to. Now, another interesting thing is if I run this, notice the position of the ghost. So the ghost is round about where the text is. I go back to room, I go to room two, I go back. He resets himself. Now it may be that you want all of your rooms to do that, but if you want the room to ha stay in the same state as when you left it, you can actually make rooms persistent as well. So if I go into room one, notice there's a persistent checkbox in the settings of the room. So if I turn on persistence for this room, I run down here, the ghost is near the text, I go to the next room, I come back, and he's in the same position. So it actually saves the state of all of the different things in that room. All right, the menu is a little tricky. What I have to do is I have to actually save off which room I'm in. So there's a little bit of code I end up having to use. If you've not seen this before, it'll be interesting to you. So when I press the letter M, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save in a global variable which room I'm in. So current room is going to keep track of which room I'm leaving. So when I go back, I'm in the same room. So if I'm in room one, I go back to room one. If I'm in room two, I go back to room two. Um, in the game start right now is where I'm setting up that global variable. So global variables also are persistent. They are in every room. So if you need to save information between different rooms, you can either have an object that has variables that's persistent. So you could have a controller, for example, that keeps track of your inventory. Or you could create global variables that keep track. Both of those ways would allow you to keep variables from room to room as you move. So right now, I press M, I go to the menu. And notice, even though Link is persistent, he disappeared. Oh, well, that's weird. So I press M again, and I go back to where I was. Now if I go into room two, press M, go back. Strange stuff. What's going on there? So the trick is this special object in the menu, called, which I have named go back. So if I go to the menu, that object right there is go back. This is the text that I'm seeing. So what does go back do? Well, when the, at the very start of this room, I do something called deactivating an object. You have to do this in code. So in, to what you have to do for code is you go to the control menu and you drag in one of these little execute code blocks. So this command isn't available in any of the drag and drops. You actually have to type it out. What this does is it doesn't delete link, but otherwise it treats him like he's been pulled out of the room. So he's not destroyed, but you won't see him, and you can't do anything with him. 
And then when I press the M key again in that room, it says, if the room you're in is menu, you should do this stuff, which is yet another thing of code, which is you need to reactivate link so he exists again. And then we're going to go to whatever room we saved off in this global variable. Unfortunately, none of these things are in drag and drop icons, so I had to throw a little bit of code at you. The basic idea is when you first go into the menu, you're deactivated. When you leave the room, you reactivate link and you go to current room. So the main effect is link is persistent because I can go to this room. I press M, link is deactivated, but still in this room. When I press M again, go back says, uh, go back, reactivate link, and then go to whatever room was saved off in current room, which currently is room two. If I go back to one, press M, go back, I'm in room one. All right, so that's how you can deal with multiple rooms is through persistence of objects or persistence of rooms.